Hi, today we're going to be learning about the power of zero or zero exponents. So this is something where you have, for instance, two to the power of zero. So in this case, my power is two to the power of zero, where my base of my power is non-zero. In other words, the base is not equal to zero, and my exponent is zero. So that's what I'm referring to when I talk about a power of zero or a zero exponent, is where this, the exponent is zero and the base is non-zero. Okay, so let's have a look at an example that we're going to simplify. So in this example, we've got three to the power of zero. And we need to simplify this. We need to see what is this actually going to be equal to. Now, if it was 3 to the power of 1, it would be equal to 3. If it was 3 to the power of 2, it would be equal to 3 times 3, which is 9. But if I have 3 to the power of 0, I'm saying that I have no 3s that have been multiplied together. So we need another way of actually working this out. So what we're going to do is we're going to work a little bit backwards here. And we're going to say, well, what is 0 the same as? 0 is the same as anything subtracted from itself. So I can say this is 3 to the power of... 4 minus 4, because 0 is the same as 4 minus 4. Or I could use 5 minus 5, or 10 minus 10, or 100 minus 100. Anything subtracted from itself is equal to 0. I'm just choosing 4 minus 4 in this example. Okay, now, taking that, like I said, we're going to be working backwards here. So we have learned the rule for division, where we said if you are dividing powers with the same base, then what do you do? You subtract the exponents. So here, I've got exponents that are being subtracted. So this is what I would have got if I had been given this expression. Over here, I've got two powers that have the same base, and they are being divided, so I subtract the exponent. So this is the same as that. I've just gone backwards with my rule over here. Now, this could also be written like this, 3 to the power of 4 divided by 3 to the power of 4. Okay, now taking that, I'm going to write it out in expanded form. So this is 3 times 3 times 3 times 3, and this is also 3 times 3 times 3 times 3. Now, because I have the same exponent at the top and the bottom, I have the same number of 3s on the top and on the bottom. Okay, and that would happen any time you start with a zero, because a zero means that you're subtracting the same number from itself, which means that you're going to have the same exponent on the top and the bottom of your fraction every single time you've got a zero exponent like that. Now, I'm going to go and simplify this, and when I simplify it, I'm going to divide, and I get one. Divide by the uh, common factor, and I get one. Divide, and I get one. Divide, and I get 1. So all of the 3s on the top have cancelled with all of the 3s in the bottom, and that leaves me with 1. Which means that 3 to the power of 0 is equal to 1. So I can say, therefore, 3 to the power of 0 is equal to 1. Now this rule will work no matter what your base is. If your base is 10, then you would have tens on the top of your fraction and tens on the bottom of your fraction, but you would have the same amount of tens on the top and the bottom, which means that they would all cancel with each other, leaving you with one. If you had 100 to the power of zero, the same thing would happen. If you had 5 to the power of zero, the same thing would happen. It doesn't matter what this base is. So long as it is to the power of zero, you will end up with one, with one exception. And that is zero. Remember I said over here that my base is non-zero. Okay, now my base has to be non-zero because if you're looking at this, the way that I got to the 1, it was by dividing by 3 to the power of 0. So if I had, ze or 3 to the power of 4, if I had 0 to the power of something at the bottom of my fraction, that means I would be dividing by 0. And remember we learned earlier in the year that we can't divide by 0. Okay, it is undefined. We just can't do it. Okay, so... I can't have 0 to the power of 0 because that implies that I'm dividing by 0 and I can't do that. Okay, so when you have a 0 exponent, the base has to be non-zero. And if the base is non-zero and you have a 0 exponent, then it will always equal 1. And so that brings us now to our rule. So 
So our rule says that when a power has a zero exponent, then so long as the so long as the base is not zero the power is equal to 1 So that is our rule over there. And it can also be written like this. a to the power of 0 equals 1. Where anything, where a can be anything except that a cannot be equal to 0. So any number to the power of 0 will equal 1 except for 0 to the power of 0. Okay. So please take note if the base is zero, the power is undefined. And remember, that's because when we have a zero exponent like this, what we did is we ended up dividing by that same base with the same number of, um, or the same exponent as we had on the top of the fraction. But because if the base is a zero, it means we're dividing by zeros, we can't do it. So if the base is zero, then the power is undefined. But if the base is anything else with a power of zero, then the power is equal to one. Okay, so now we're going to go and do some practicing using the rule. Okay, so in this one, we're going to simplify leaving in exponential form. This is going to be nice and quick and easy. We're going to use our rule and that says that in this case, I've got 2 to the power of 0. Is the base 0? No, it's not. As long as it is non-zero, I can use my rule. So because I have a power of 0, because my exponent is 0, I can take that power and it is equal to 1. And that's all we have to do for that one. Okay, so now I'm going to give you some that you're going to do for yourself. I'm going to give you two minutes to work on these.
Okay, let's go through each of those examples. So in question A, we had 8 to the power of 0. First we check if the base is non-zero, in this case it is, so my zero exponent makes that equal to 1. In question B, I've got negative 5 to the power of 0, and I need to be careful with this one. The base in this example is 5, it is not negative 5. The negative is not part of the base, which means that the negative is going to remain unchanged, and the zero exponent is going to cause the 5 to change to 1, so it's going to be negative 1. Question C, I've got 0 to the power of 0. Remember, we said that if the base is 0, it means that this is going to be undefined. Question D, we had negative 3 to the power of 0, but in this case, the negative is in brackets with the 3, which means that it is part of the base. And so that means that this whole thing is going to change to 1. Now, 0 is actually an even number, which means that it also would make that negative change to positive as well. So my whole base is negative 3, which means that that whole power is going to change to 1, including the negative in this case. Okay, over here, I've got 5 minus 20 to the power of 0. Now we already know that we have to work out what's inside the brackets first. So I'm going to show that. I'm going to have 5 minus 20 is negative 15 to the power of 0. And now I can simplify this, and that gives me... 1, but I could actually have done this in one step. I could have gone 5 minus 20 to the power of 0. Now, I know that any base to the power of 0, so long as it is not equal to, so long as the base is not equal to 0, any base to the power of 0 will give me 1. So I don't even need to know what that works out to, so long as I know it's not going to be 0. Now, I can see when I look at that that it's not going to be equal to 0. So I could have gone straight to 1 over there because I know that it's not going to be 0, which means that I know that it's going to change to 1 when it has, a, when it has an exponent of 0. And then the last one over here, now this one we do need to be a little bit more careful with because there's a little bit more involved. We can't just know straight away by looking at it. So I'm going to actually simplify. So I have 2 minus 5 plus 3, and that gives me 0 to the power of 0. I don't, need to really, don't really need to write the brackets over there. Okay, so I've got 0 to the power of 0. And because the base is 0, that means that my um, power is going to be undefined. Okay, right, now let's have a look at another example. So in this case, I have got 3 to the power of 6 times 5 to the power of 7. In brackets to the power of zero. Okay, now there are two ways of doing this question. The first way is to use the power of a power rule and then simplify each one separately, where we would say, okay, so now I can say three to the power of six, I multiply by the exponent outside because I've, I've got a power inside and a power outside, and I need to also because this is a product, I need to do it to every single factor of that product. So I'm going to say three to the power of six times seven is three to the power of zero. I mean, three, 3 to the power of 6 times 0 is 3 to the power of 0, times 5 to the power of 7 times 0 is also 0. That gives me 1 times 1, which is equal to 1. But there's a quicker way of doing it, similar to what I did over here in this example, where I can say, I know that this is not going to be equal to 0. Okay, 3 to the power of anything can't be equal to 0. I can't multiply, unless I'm multiplying 3 by 0, I can't get a 0 by multiplying 3 by anything. And if I have 3 to the power of something, I'm just multiplying 3s together. So there's no way that that can give me 0, and there's no way that this can give me 0 either. So this base can't possibly be equal to 0. So if I have 3 to the power of 6 times 5 to the power of 7, I know that that base isn't equal to 0, so I can straight away say this whole base... So the power of 0 is a non-zero base to the power of 0 gives me 1. So I could have gone straight to the answer in this one, just like I could with that one as well over there. Okay, so now I'm going to give you some that you're going to work on for yourself. And I'm going to give you two minutes to work on these.
Okay, let's go through those examples. So in question A, we had 2 cubed times 4 squared in brackets to the power of 0. And just like we had in the previous example, I can say this whole base, I know it's not going to be equal to 0, which means that I have a non-zero base equal, uh, to the power of 0, and that gives me 1. So I could have worked it out all separately and then worked it out and then multiplied the ones together and got one, but I don't need to. I can go straight to the one over here. And the same thing happens with the next one. I've got three to the power of five times four to the power of three times two squared in brackets to the power of zero. Again, none of those can give me zero, which means that my base is going to be non-zero to the power of zero is equal to one. And then the last one over here, I've got in brackets negative five squared times 7 to the power of 4 times negative 3 cubed. Now don't get confused by these brackets inside, these brackets inside brackets. It doesn't actually mat matter because none of these, again, none of these can equal 0. Negative 5 squared will be 5 squared. 7 to the power of 4 is 7 to the power of 4 and negative 3 cubed is just negative 3 cubed. They are all just normal numbers with exponents so they will not equal 0 which means I have a whole lot of stuff in my brackets to the power of zero, it's a base to the power of zero, gives me one. So that example also is equal to one. Okay, and then the last one, last example that I'm going to do with you, we've got in this case, negative two times three to the power of zero times five squared times seven to the power of eight in brackets to the power of zero. Okay, so in this case, now there's a little bit more going on here, okay? I don't just have one base with a power of zero or one base that consists of stuff, like in the brackets over here. It was still one base with a power of zero. Here I've got multiple different powers that are being multiplied together, and they're not all in brackets with one exponent outside. So let's go and work out each thing separately that we need to. So I've got over here negative two. I can't do anything with that. Over here, I've got 3 to the power of 0. Anything to the power of 0 that isn't, doesn't have a base of 0 is going to be 1. So that's times 1. Times 5 squared is still 5 squared. Times 7 to the power of 8 in brackets to the power of 0. This is non-zero to the power of 0, which means that this is going to be equal to 1. So I can change that to 1 straight away. I don't need to first multiply the 8 by the, the 0 because this is a base to the power of 0. Okay, and now I can simplify that. So I've got negative two, the ones I don't need to worry about. The only time I would have to worry about those ones if there was only ones. But there's not only ones, there are other numbers here as well. So I don't have to worry about them because multiplying by one doesn't actually make any difference. So I all I have to actually worry about here is negative two times five squared. Okay. So that's what you should get for that example. So now I'm going to give you a few that you're going to do for yourself. And I'm going to give you three minutes to work on these.
Okay, let's go through those examples. So in question A, we had negative 3 to the power of 0 times 2 to the power of 5 times 7 squared to the power of 0 times 5 cubed. Now first of all, you need to be careful over here that the negative is not in brackets with the 3 to the power of 0. It's not like it is part of the base. So the negative is going to stay negative. Then I've got 3 to the power of 0, which is 1 times 2 to the power of 5 times 7 squared to the power of 0 is equal to 1 times 5 cubed. So now let's go and simplify. I've got, out of all of this, I've got 1 negative, so it stays negative, and then I've got 2 to the power of 5 times 5 cubed. The 1s are not going to be part of what I need to write down. Okay, so that is what you should have got for question A. Question B. 2 to the power of 0 to the power of 4. So now this one over here, the 0 is not outside the brackets. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to work this out. I'm going to say, okay, 2 to the power of 0. I could actually work this out and get 1 and then raise it to the power of 4. Or what I can do is I can raise my power to a power and I can multiply my exponents together. So that's going to be 2 to the power of 0 times 4 is 0 times 3 to the power of 5 times 7 squared times negative 11 in brackets to the power of 0 is 1. Okay, so then this is also equal to 1 times 3 to the power of 5 times 7 squared times 1. You don't have to write that one again there if you don't want to. And then we can just write down what we're left with. The 1s we don't need to worry about, so it's just 3 to the power of 5 times 7 squared. So that's what you should have got for question B. And then the last one, question C, I've got 6 to the power of 0, which is 1, times negative, three negative 5 to the power of 3, which is negative because it's an odd exponent. That means that it's going to stay negative. So it's negative 5 cubed times negative 2 to the power of 4. This is an even exponent, so that's going to change to positive. So it's going to be positive 2 to the power of 4 divided by 3 squared to the power of 0 is 1. Again, this divide by 1 isn't going to make any difference to anything that I'm doing, and this 1 over here isn't either. So I just have to worry about what I'm left with over here. So I've got negative 5 cubed times 2 to the power of 4. I've got 1 negative, so my answer is going to be negative. And then I'm going to write them in numerical order. So I've got 2 to the power of 4 times 5 cubed. So I'm writing my basis from smallest to biggest. And that's what you should have got for that example. Right, that is how we work with the power of zero. Now that we've learned the concepts in this lesson, it's important to practice, practice, practice. If you haven't already got the worksheet that goes with this video, you can find it by clicking on the link in the description below. The worksheet comes with an extra exercise full of questions for you to work on to master the concepts covered in this lesson. If you found this video helpful, please hit the like button so that others can benefit from it too. Also be sure to subscribe so that you can easily find my other lessons and hit the bell so that you will get notified about lessons as I upload them.